Hey, this is a little different. And sorry for the shakiness. I'm having to do this on my phone uh, because I can't get a tripod back there. So if you watch my little shop tour video, um, or any of the videos that I've posted here recently, one of the questions that I get asked is how do I actually um, filter my machines or how do I discard of, if you will, the VOCs. So obviously I've got my window right here, so sorry for any um, you know, lighting or glare. It's kind of hard to avoid to show this. Um, down here I have a piece of window trim. It was a kit I got on Amazon. And essentially I put some foam around it and it's got a four inch outlet. And anytime I'm running, that, that's a temporary fix. I'm actually just gonna make it a piece of wood that's permanent, that way it's more solid, but that, that was a way to get me up and running. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. This is the Q1 Pro and behind it, I've got a four inch adapter that is using alien tape and it is adhered to the back of the exit area and it pulls the exhaust out and down there and it connects into this Y and then same thing can't tell if you can see it but on the back of the bamboo it has that as well and then there is a third tube and a 200 CFM inline fan that draws anything out and on the other end is my that connects to the window piece and it's got a screen in there and just uh, connects out and takes everything out that fan is variable speed so like when I'm doing the 3d printing like I run it at like uh, of course I have the, the fans in each printer running and they all have carbon in them um, that gets replaced generally every other week I replace the carbon if I'm running um, you know anything aside from PLA or PETG usually um, that stuff there this filter is more than capable of handling you can see right now it tells you the parts per million in the air of VOCs and like generally I'm in the green every now and again when I first start up or something it might peak up but then it's automatic it'll ramp up and it'll pull out you know it'll speed up the motors and filter more air that filter is for a 500 square foot room and this room is only 12 by 12 so um, you know it's more than capable uh, so that's how I handle my venting now that said if you watch my last video you know all this this machine here is moving and it's gonna be put over here and I've got another piece of shelf that I'm building that's gonna go right here and the reason for that it's not gonna be as high as this shelf it's actually gonna sit down just a little bit so I can still open this door fully to access this printer, but that's gonna be the 20 watt diode laser right there. And that is also, I've got another adapter, uh, a uh, three-way adapter with some gates ordered. So essentially what'll happen is um, I'll take that, that that connector there off and add the three-way instead of just the two-way or the four-way I guess you'd say and I'll have the laser fan exhausted with its own 300 CFM fan so I'm gonna get this same unit it's just 100 CFM more that's only a 200 CFM and that'll be directed to the laser in line to the laser and it'll pull directly from the laser housing around here it will connect into there and it will just get vented out the window and when I'm running the laser these here will have I don't know if you're very familiar but they have inline gates that you can actually like the tube will connect on each side and then it puts a, a gate down in the middle those will go down when I'm running the laser uh, anything that would be super smoky 
which is pretty much everything with the laser, but that's more than adequate. Uh, 300 CFM will draw that out, no problem. Um, and as long as you keep it enclosed and when the job is done, you let it sit for you know a couple minutes to exhaust all the fumes, the smell will be very minimal out of that. Um, and then these will just be built in and added and then I can close off the la laser gate and open the 3D printer gates when I'm doing, you know, running any uh, high voc materials in any of these machines. So it's going to change a little bit, and I'll do a video when it's complete. But I was asked that several times, and I figured it was important to some people to note. Um, two major things to factor in when you're doing any of this. Filtration and, and air replacement. You want good filtration, and you want to be able to circulate the air that's in your room. Uh, and, and I can't stress, they're both important. So you want an active air, whether you've got a fan blowing, just moving air around, basically. It doesn't have to be a fresh, fresh air feed tube. You just want air moving. Uh, and then, like, a good filter. I'm probably going to pick up another one of these, and it'll go down at this end next to the laser. And uh, just just to pick up any other, you know, smells that might be around. And that, that's how I'm going to have it set up for now. Um, I, I, I've come to the point where, uh, I, you know, I have a, a building outside, a 20 by 12 building that I've got a, a, you know, a workout room built in and a loft with some storage generally for all these big old boxes for all this crap. Um, but I might have to uh, consider... There's two things going to happen. Either I'm going to get some metal shells that will hold six printers and do two. And then I can get 12 printers in here. Which that's probably going to happen. And then I can do the diode laser. But the issue lies is um, I'm also going to order uh, a... Uh, 55 watt or 60 watt desktop CO2 laser from Ohmtech, uh, the new one they've got out, uh, and that's going to be a lot. So it's it's a work in progress. It's liable. This is liable to change. But if this changes, it will be a split shelf right here, and all the way to the ceiling pretty much, and it'll have two shelves of printers, basically three three and three uh but that's i've got to look at my options with shelving just because um this particular it is this printer in particular is like 77 pounds uh which is more than any of these heck it's probably more than this one and this one put together um but i love this printer it's it's totally with all its little quirks it, it's phenomenal so i i highly recommend that printer uh, but yeah, that, that's how I have my, my, you know, ventilation for now. Um, like I said, that plastic piece over here, that's going to, I'm going to get some uh, half inch plywood sheet and I'm going to make that same uh, shape and mold, but I'm going to put, it's going to have two four inch outlets on it. One for the laser and, and, and one for the 3D printer is when it's all said and done. Uh, in the interim, like I said, I've got those little gates that's going to go on there. And I will make a full video of that um, either when I'm doing it or after it's done, depending on how much space. Like I said, this is a small room. This is, I think it's actually 12 by 11 or 11 by 10. It, it's not a big room. This is, it was an office, really. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. If you have any questions about any of that or if I can guide you to any products you might need to help you do that i'm happy to answer it just put it down in the comments below and i really look forward to hearing from you uh if you have any of these machines or you have any ideas that might help uh make this setup any better uh you know feel free to leave it in the comment below as well and uh one more thing i wanted to touch on just because i was asked and before i forget these little white rods uh they were dollar family dollar shower rods that, that's that's what's holding all my filament right now. Um, they work out real well. They were like they were on sale for five dollars a piece. 
I bought four of them and basically it keeps quite a bit of filament on the ground off the ground but now i got too much filament so another problem working on a solution thanks for being the best part of the channel i appreciate each and every one of you don't forget to like share and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one